1987, Capcom released the first Street Fighter in arcades across the world. I remember quite vividly walking into a department store called Roses in my hometown and seeing it for the very first time. The attract mode had been loud and got my attention instantly. I had seen one-on-one -on -one fighting games before, of course, all the way back to the ancient karate champ and Yeyar Kung Fu. This was different, however. Faster, more personality, and an interface that was easy to understand and get results. I won't lie to you and claim to have been some sort of fighting game savant, because pretty much every time I touched the game I had my ass handed to me only a couple of guys in. I kept at it though and developed a fondness for its characters and gameplay. I'd seen it in various other arcades over the years and even ran across its alternate pressure sensitive buttons version a time or two. Little did I know Capcom was on the cusp of releasing a sequel in 1991, a game that would revitalize the arcade and bring newfound attention to the one-on-one -on -one fighting game genre. In this episode we take a look at the original Street Fighter 2 and my experience finding it first in the arcade and then playing it at home on the Super Nintendo. I hope you guys enjoy Arcade Spotlight, a Street Fighter 2 story. Whispers of Street Fighter 2 began in my high school during lunch. Friends and fellow classmates were talking about a new arcade game that lets you fight it out against a friend or battle the computer. I had remembered my time with Street Fighter, so I was excited to find a cabinet and give it a go. My buddy Nathan and I found it at a grocery store called Food Lion, and we eagerly dropped our quarters in to do battle. The character selection screen was way different from the first. You were always the same dude in the first one, a red-headed punk we called Ryu, and you chose your starting country, not who you wanted to fight as. Here in part two, there were eight different players to choose from, all with varying nationalities and skills. I honestly can't recall who I chose the very first time, but I sure as hell remember exactly who my friend Nathan picked. He was tickled by the monstrous looking Blanca and chose him. Nathan had never played Street Fighter before, so I was ready to take him to task and rub his nose in an ass whooping I was about to bestow upon him. As soon as the match started I knew my skills acquired in the original game would mean little here. This new game moved more fluidly and you could cover the entire length of the screen in just a few jumps. Nathan immediately felt my overconfidence turn to fear and used Blanca's impressive reach to close in on me and utterly destroy me with jump kicks and his half a screen away fierce punch. I was utterly and completely destroyed within seconds. Round two starts and again I am dizzy on the ground in seconds. Blanca was an extension of his will and he meant to humiliate me each and every time we played. The jump kicks, sweeps, uppercuts, and even throws came with such swift ferocity I was giving up quarters left and right trying to find a character who could defend against him. I found none, and my first experience with Street Fighter 2 will go down as one of the most infuriating and humiliating days of gaming I have ever had. I never won a single round, and he let me know it for weeks after. I began playing Street Fighter 2 on my own against the CPU. I started to get a feel for blocking attacks and really started to notice that certain moves could knock other fighters out of their attacks, especially when they jumped at you. I started getting fairly good at timing things like sweeps and throws, and before you knew it, I was regularly beating the CPU three or four times before needing to continue. I had been playing with several different characters too, and was able to switch up and play well with all of them. I was improving, and I was going to exact my revenge for the besmirchment I had suffered. As I had been in hiding playing the arcade version, Street Fighter 2 had made its home debut on the Super Nintendo. Once again it was all the rage amongst my friends, and of course Nathan picks it up as soon as it's released. 
It's the summer of 1992, and all my friends are celebrating their newfound freedoms with their driver's licenses, and all converge on Nathan's house for some late night Street Fighter II matches. The die was cast, and I was about to have my opportunity to finally avenge my previous losses. The controller was passed around friend to friend, everyone enjoying their go at one another, many playing the Super Nintendo game for the first time. When my turn came up, I asked to play against Nathan. I had an audience now, and I was much better than before, and I just knew my time in the light had come. I sat in the corner of the room my friends and I were playing in, my head held low and still completely confused by what had just happened. Three straight matches we had played, he with Blanca, me with three different fighters, desperately trying to find a hole in his game. All I found is what I had known so well before, a complete and total ass whooping. That's right, he completely destroyed me again. In my time improving, he had improved as well. But now he was doing new things, special moves they were called, and I had been epically destroyed again. Nothing I had learned had helped me, and once again I could hear the cackles of his laugh long after the play session had ended. I picked up the Super Nintendo version myself soon after. I needed to crack this game and return some dignity to my gaming skills. I was no slouch in games, dammit. I had beaten shinobi games like they were nothing. I had beaten shoot 'em ups that destroyed the average player, and I had been a god amongst my friends in sports games like Madden. I had another friend named Nathan that also enjoyed playing Street Fighter 2 and spoke of it often. I invited him over for a few matches on the Super Nintendo, hoping to get some practice in. His favorite character had been Guile. And can you believe it? I was beaten to a pulp yet again. He wrecked me no matter who I used, and I quickly realized that whatever the hell I was doing in this game, I was doing it wrong. Unlike Nathan number one, this guy was quite a bit less boastful in his wins, and even shared how he was getting by with the destruction of me. He pointed out special moves, how to do them, and how he was able to use projectiles to set up throws and counters. The entire experience had been yet another blow to my ego, but I came away with a newfound sense of understanding. It was pretty clear to me the reason why I was doing so poorly was because I had not mastered any of the special moves, didn't fully understand the combo or counter systems, and I was overly aggressive, allowing myself to be controlled. Step one was needing to get the special moves down so they would come out exactly when I wanted them. Charge moves had been the easiest at first. Simply pull back on the directional pad for a couple of seconds, and then press forward in the proper attack button. Characters like Guile, Blanca, and E. Honda used charge attacks, so I started there first. I had never been able to pull off the mysterious fireball and uppercuts of Ryu and Ken, however. I just didn't understand the mechanics. I was pressing down, down forward, and then forward in attack, but nothing was happening. That was when I realized I was trying to do these motions separately, when the game wanted you to do them all in one single motion. This realization was nothing short of an epiphany, and all of a sudden, I was throwing fireballs, uppercuts, and hurricane kicks with a fair amount of accuracy. I also began to really see the combo system as a way to inflict major damage. I began to connect jump kicks into sweeps for two-hit knockdowns, then jump kicks into uppercuts, then weak attacks into stronger attacks. I was able to take half a life bar from the CPU at times with these combos, and started trying different combinations from there to see what worked and what didn't. I also stopped jumping all over the screen like a madman, and really started protecting myself, using the block as often as I attacked. Being on the ground more often also meant that I started to understand how to knock characters out of the air myself, and what attacks were most useful for the faster combatants. Soon I was wrecking the CPU flawlessly on the hardest setting, and seeing every single ending in the game. It was time to see if these skills would finally do me proud, or if this game simply wasn't in my skill set to play against others.
Instead of waiting to be invited, I chose to pursue a match with my friend Nathan number one. It was time to face my fear, so I told him point blank I was ready to play him again. His overconfidence was maddening, basically laughing at me and asking me if I was sure I wanted more. We sat side by side waiting for the game to start up. He of course chose Blanca, his favorite, and I chose Ken, one of the guys I had been using regularly. I guess you're expecting me to tell you that I whooped his ass at this point in the story, right? That isn't what happened at all. In fact, he destroyed me yet again right then and there. I was so nervous I couldn't get a fireball off if I wanted it, much less an uppercut. He stayed on me like stink on shit, and while my defensive game had improved considerably and I stayed alive a lot longer, it was still a crushing defeat. The nerves turned to anger as I was defeated again. I couldn't believe this. What the heck? I switched my character to Ryu and stopped retreating every time the match started. I went in aggressive with sweeps, started to rely on my ground counters, and started mixing in fireballs here and there that were actually starting to come out. Lo and behold, I won my first match against him, and my confidence shot through the roof. We sat and played for a few hours, sometimes I'd win, sometimes him, until the tide finally fully turned my way. I began to defeat him regularly to the point where he actually started choosing other characters, but he was clearly unfamiliar with them, and my wins became easier and more dominating. By the time the session was over, I had defeated him many, many more times than he had ever beaten me, and the look on his face was priceless. He no longer had that shit-eating grin on his face. He no longer laughed at me after every match. His trash talk was gone, and I had finally redeemed myself. My buddy Nathan and I would remain fiercely competitive in the years to come, particularly in the Super Nintendo WWF games, but that is a story for another time. The story you just experienced were some of my most powerful memories of Street Fighter 2. I went from a kid thinking I was great at every game I touched, to a kid that was being made fun of by his pals for losing so badly, to finally a kid that redeemed himself with practice and a desire to get better. Street Fighter 2 would go on to present me more challenges after that, some of them quite brutal and worthy of a story themselves. That's what made the game so incredible. There was always someone out there that had your number no matter how good you were. Even with all my practice and newfound skills, I still met people in the arcade that could beat me. Switching around characters and trying to learn more than one presented its own challenges, and I often found myself wanting to use a variety of guys to keep my skills sharp and my mind open to who I may need to pull out to win a fight. I certainly wasn't the best Street Fighter 2 player ever, but I enjoyed the challenge of facing new people and seeing how much they could push me and what I knew of the game. And there was your hook, a game that was capable of always being new simply because of the competitor next to you. Some would fall by the wayside with little effort, while others would push you to the very limits of your skill and patience, making you reassess your tactics and routines. That hook entertained an entire generation, revitalized an arcade industry in decline, and solidified the fighting genre as a premier part of the hobby for years to come. Street Fighter 2 is quite simply one of the best games ever made. I'm Sigalord X, thank you guys for watching, and I will catch you next time.